Well, hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And it is about 10.30 on a Saturday evening, and I am working to make that project, which you've probably seen before. Uh, I've already got it designed up, but since it's so late in the evening, I'm just going to go ahead and run it out and let you watch and tell you what I'm doing as I'm going through this process. So we're going to be setting this project up with several bits. This is going to be what they call a, in here, is going to be a V-carve with a flat bottom depth. I'm not going to go through the design. We're just going to watch it cut. I'll tell you what I'm using. Um, so here's the steps we're going to go through to do this, and you just get to watch it run and how I've optimized tool paths to make this work. First thing we're going to do is cut out this flower thing here. And we're going to do it with a 90-degree V-bit. We're going to use the quarter-inch 90 degree V bit that comes from the IDC Woodcraft store. And then that's going to do that. And then this is all a V carving in here. If you've not seen a V carving quite like this, this is what they call a flat bottom V carve. And when we go into the letters, you can see in this area that this is all tapered. So it's a V carve, and we've directed this to be a flat bottom. So it's going down to an eighth of an inch. And the cool thing about this type of V carving is that it gives a lot of extra character to the letters. Now, what we're going to be doing, though, is doing some clearance cut on that. So let's just walk through the steps real quick, and then we're going to start cutting. All right, so number one operation is 90 degree v-bit is going to come in and cut out this area right here this really cool little swirl and then it's going to come in and it's going to cut all this all this swirl the v-bit it's going to run around here twice and in the welcome and then we're going to go into let me take a look at what i got here um then we go into drill the mount holes okay so we're going to switch over <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to switch over to a roughing end mill. Now this is a bit that has just been released off of IDC Woodcraft, and um, it looks like this. And this thing just rips through projects. A lot of people ask me, why do you want to use a bit like this on a CNC router? And the reason you want to use a bit like this is if you're doing a lot of deep projects and you want to hog out a lot of material really fast. If you go to my TikTok, you will see a video where I cut this in two minutes. So it cut it out of a piece of oak that's an inch and a half thick. And these five holes were cut out with this bit within 45 seconds, I think. So that will be the second bit. We're going to rough out all that area here. And by the way, uh, I'm not uh, responding to the uh, messages, although leave messages. Um, it's just I can't see it right now because it's in my cell phone. And so I'm just running through this stuff. OK, so the roughing bit is going to run through here. It's going to, I've, that bit runs like lightning quick. So 80 inches per minute, 80 plunge rate, 80% 80 step over. It'll have that ripped out in no time. And then we're going to come back in with the, um, we got the, uh, all right, boundary accent. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to a half inch radius bit, this one right here. This is another IDC Woodcraft tool. This thing's good for your juice grooves. It's good for accent lines, like what we're going to have right here around the sign. And so we're going to cut that out, and then we're going to roll on to the outer profile cutout. So we're going to go to a compression end mill from there, and that's this right here. And we are going to cut all the way through that sign in one shot to profile it out. So it's, let me zoom that out. 
So it's just going to come in. It's going to cut all that out in one pass. And then I'm going to... Um, hi. Okay, I can read some of these messages. Hi there, Jeff and uh, Timmy. I do see bits or money, and then it kind of cut off. So I don't know what you meant, what was there. Uh, all right, and then, uh, then the finish. So we're just going to get in here and do the finish, the finishing. The roughing is going to come through here. It's going to be a 0.15 shallow, and then, and then, um, and then we're going to come in with the eighth inch bit, clean it up, and and then uh, I think the sign will be done. So I got the 90 on there, and we're just going to let it run. You can watch this thing run out. It should go fairly quick. The 90 isn't the fastest bit on the planet. Uh, but that's because it's doing delicate work. All right, putting my earbuds on and uh, gonna let it rock out and I'll talk to you after this pass. You just made that one, huh? All right, cool. Okay, here we go. So we're going over to G Center and I've got it loaded up. And I did zero it out already. I love watching these things run. I love watching these videos. Stuff like watching the campfires. And Jeff, that's funny. Hell yeah. So when you can't go camping in the wintertime, just sit around and make a bunch of stuff on your CNC. Do the same thing. Can't roast your marshmallows. Split in the middle. It's 45. That's what G Center's telling me. Ah, uh, Jeff, you gotta you gotta send a picture of that thing to me. Send me pictures in progress every time you make a pour.
get some shadow into this so it's easier to see. So I'm doing this on the long mill, 30 by 30. This is the part I like. Just watching that thing roll around. All around those little swirls. Looks like it's going to make a third pass on this thing. So that speed, running at 45 millimeter or inches per minute, is too slow. So we're going to speed that up. And the way you speed up on G Center, you can speed it up and slow it down just temporarily right down here. You can adjust it with these buttons so you can incrementally bring it up or down, or you can ramp it up like 10%. So I'm going to speed that up. So it's now it's a, you can see right here it's 100%, 110. I'm going to bring it up to 120. I click that, and now it's going to go to 120. So if you run a bit too slow, you can dole it up a lot faster. Still a long way to go on this one. I think it's got another pass it's got to make right here. So 
I think it has one more pass to make around all this. And if it still looks like crap, like it does right now, then that means that bit has gotten dulled. Time to swap it out. But it looks like it has one more pass to make here. So just so you know, I am making this sign for an ad that I'm going to be putting on YouTube. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that's going to make you want to skip that ad. You push that skip button. Over an hour? Over your settings. This is pine, uh, it's like it's a bunch of pine slats that are glued together. So you can buy this, it's, it's actually really inexpensive because it's all the pieces they couldn't use for two by fours and other pieces, so they um, they're, they're used for shelving. I get this at Lowe's. So I bumped the feed rate up to 160%. So its original setting was 45 inches per minute. So now it's running at about 65. Sorry, Bill, I missed your message there. It came up on the screen when I was talking now, popped off. By the way, the IDC Woodcraft database has been updated. So if you have downloaded it in the past, then go to the IDC Woodcraft website and on the front page is the newest download. And that has a couple more bits that have just been added. How would what affect the final design? So if you can hear me talking over the machines, somebody just uh, type it in the comments, yes. I can hear you, Garrett. All right, thanks, Ben. Okay, so you did a one eighth bit on this job here. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's right over there, brother. And I can't wait to start playing with that thing. And I got a small one, the 40K is right there, the 40 watt. So I got a lot of stuff going on. And I've got another uh, industrial CNC router coming, a four foot by four foot. Yeah, you know, uh, by the way, that laser, so that's a mod board if uh, you haven't watched that video. And I was able to negotiate the discount. So people in the public channel, this is the way I've worked, negotiated this. Oh, I'm reading this. Uh, he runs at least four machines. Oh, wow. So, this is the way I negotiated this whole thing. Because I told him I had the CNC insiders list. So, if you're not on the CNC insiders list, then you're missing out on something. On the, I always negotiate better deals for CNC insiders. Usually announce that, but in this case, I don't really make that uh, announcement uh, other than here. I don't know. We're gonna watch this for a second. Not finish nothing. It's so cool to watch it. Now. Really Baby. Okay, so because there's so many people in the channel, when that happens, companies start to contact you. Contact you. Yeah, there's a and I get contacted all the time. Stop people wanting to sell all their stuff. And I turn so many of them down. So many. Uh, but this one at the laser is I talk to the technical service quite a few times, talk to the company. And I was satisfied enough. So, public discount is 6% insiders get 10% but you have to get on the CNC insider for this. That's the agreement we come up with. And if you do, then email me and you know you're, you're on the list. That's for the lasers, not just the 80 watt that I just picked up. Uh, well, so when am I going to get the 48 going? I, I had it going, then I got a technical issue going on with it. Um, and I've had so much stuff going on in the background, business-wise, that I've had to pull back and regroup on everything I've been doing. Because I've been starting to spread myself just a little too thin. And I don't know if you watch that uh, conversation I had with Mark Lindsay. But one of the things he said is you've got to enjoy what you're doing, right? And so I started to lose that enjoyment. I started to feel real stressed. And so, but I do want to do the 48. I want to do a really nice, complex job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, I don't make a lot of projects for people uh, because I'm so tied up in teaching. My, my heart is in teaching. So what's the issue you're having with the 48, Jeff? Uh, it's 
So, the, so this file is, I don't make it available to insiders. No, this one, there's two ways you can get this. Uh, one, I sell it on Etsy. And then, and the reason I don't pass it out is because it's a gift file that comes with the IDC Woodcraft starter set. So I have to keep things. Uh, so this one is not getting given away. Uh, even to insiders. One of the things I'm doing is I make files. Uh, I am making them available to insiders. Now you see that jump out right there? I've it a couple of times. That's because the black nodes in the design there and there. I tried to work them all out, but I'm gonna have to work uh, some more of them out. Yeah, that, that's because of the, the black notes. So if you ever do carving, and, and it, you have all kind of messed up lines along there, it's probably because you have black nodes right in the middle of your... Maybe probably not. Turn to zero. It, the thing went off the screen. Oh, there it is. Uh, just have them back to start one second pass. So that's have you talked a long row about that? Alright, so I'm not sure I set it up to be cleaning out like that. The eighth inch should be going in there to clean that out later. So this is the part about Vectric. Uh, generate the code for this so you don't have to download anything. Make it all yourself from scratch. Yeah. Uh, what was I just going to say? Oh, this is about vectors. See how this thing's going all over the place, touching a bunch of places. You can't work that out. It's vectric. So the way, the reason it does that is because it, the, it it's stepping down incrementally to clean things out. And it's coming down to certain levels. And so it cleans everything out of those levels, and then it's got to go to the next level. And so it bounces all over again until it gets to the bottom of every v car. So it's a, it's a total pain in, in the butt, but you can't stop it because it's the way vector is written. Oh my God, come on. Step in the refresh now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, come on already. We're like waiting for this part to get done, and that part to get done, and that part to get done. So we had this like cool, complete thing. Project with my finger over the stop button because you keep forgetting the start. <laughs> We've all been down there. We've all been down that road. There is a, uh, a, a relay you can get, you can add it into the machine. It's called an IoT relay. Um, so when your control is sent, a code that's called an M3, which is spindle on, it'll trigger, trigger that relay and it'll turn the router on. And you just leave the router and power switch on. So it's called an IoT switch. 
uh, I think it's IOT or ITO. Or relay. Relay. Oh my god. This is where I want to put a gun to my head and say, oh! No. <laughs> So next time, I will set this up with a different V-bit and do it with the uh, big stiffy 90 V-bit. I'll get it and I'll show you. So this is the big stiffy 90 V-bit. This thing would have been done if I programmed it this bit. It would have done it in uh, probably three, three runs the other way around. So that's on the IDC Woodcraft store as well. So with almost every router, but hey, yeah, I can see that it big stick. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, totally. This thing would have been done like a while ago. See how inefficient that is. This is just pine. Regular old cheap pine. This is shelving wood. You get it from Lowe's. Uh, it's probably the least expensive material you can buy. Uh, considering. So this was a six foot by uh, 16 wide. And it's listed at three quarters of an inch, but it's not a true three quarter. It's actually a point six eight. And that's actually something I didn't take into account when I programmed this thing. So I'm gonna have a nice little outline of the sign when I'm done. Mold. Yeah, another thing you use is foam board for practice. It's like the uh, high density foam board, insulated foam board, the pink stuff. If you're brand new, uh, that way you don't break your fit. You know, just plunge in the foam. Touch up. You're trying to rationalize. Um, so it's not the CNC machine that does that. This is the way Vectric sets this up. Oh, oh, here it comes. So Vectric uh, works down at levels, and so it sets a level. It's going to come around, clean up at these little areas that it couldn't get to at some level, and then some of them still have more, so it's going to come back again to the same spot. And it's more around. You can't do anything about it. Well, what you can do about it, you're asking me to explain why the software does what it does. It's all in the mathematics of it, the way it's set up. So the way you can stop that is by using a bigger bit, just like that. So use the big stiffening board. This would have been done in two passes. Next time I do something like this, I, I, I won't mess with that. With the mind. I mean, these are good bits. You can get some really good detail, but I just didn't realize I was going to have this much time on it. That's one of the good things about G7, had I looked, let me show you. So G Sender has the time listed there. So when you load the code, it's going to tell you the amount of time that that code is going to run. And granted, I've already amped this up to 160%. So when you load the code up right here, it's going to tell you how long that program is going to run. So I looked at it. It was 30 minutes. It was always too late. I already had uh, a bunch of awesome people hanging out on the channel.
Yeah, you're right. All right. Thank goodness we're done with that one. So. All right, so the next bit we're going to is the roughing end mill. Now, this will go a lot faster so, that's, so you can see it. This is something I just got on the IDC store, and I'm almost sold out of these things already, so I have to order more from my supplier. Um, this, like, rips through material, I tell you what. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to drill the four corner holes, and then it's going to rough out all this material in here, and then we'll come back in with a finish pass on all that material. So, so just to show you on the design, so it's going to drill these four holes, just going to plunge right down in at 80 inches per minute. By the way, I don't necessarily recommend doing that with an end mill. The roughing end mill has got a really good ejection on it, so you're going to be okay with this if you do that. Um, it's going to do these four, and then it's going to come in and clear out all that material there. It's going to run lickety split fast, so we're going to load that up in G Sender. <clears throat> And there we go. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be so fast. All right, we're going to swap out the tool, set the zero. So when you're setting these things up, you know, I'm just going to give you my whole train of thought on this whole thing as I move along. And reposition this guy. So for a second, I'm not going to be looking at the screen if you type something. All right, so we're going to bring it forward. We're going to take the Z up. And the one thing we always want to be careful of is we don't, we don't bump up to the end. Uh, like we don't run into the, the, the physical limits of the machine because you'll lose your zero points in that direction. So if I move the Z up all the way, then, and, and, the, and the motor kept trying to go, but it physically could not go up anymore, the, the, the control software, G Sender, is going to think it's still moving. Right, and so it's just going to keep counting in G-Sender, but it's physically not moving, so it's losing all of its uh, information. All right, so whenever you change out a bit, remember, please remember to clean your collets out. That sawdust in there acts like a lubricant, and that's the cause of router bits moving, so like slowly moving in and out as you're making a cut. If you've ever seen that, I think most of us experienced it. You're doing a lot of cuts and you start noticing that router bit's getting deeper and deeper and you don't know why. All right, let's put this puppy in. So I'm gonna insert it all the way up, up the collar, oh, right, right to there. So we're gonna have three quarters, five eighths of an inch in there. So I don't know if you've seen it before. Um, Sometimes people have the cracked housings. And the reason that's happening is they're using, number one, they're using the red pin to, uh, to hold the shaft. So, and then they'll come in with the big wrench and they'll crank down really hard on it. Okay, Makita says it's okay to use that pin to tighten your stuff. I'm a huge proponent of it because you can start to stress the housing and you'll start to uh, stress out the, the aluminum in here where the bearing's at. So I never, ever use that pin to tighten all the rest of the way. When you tighten down, you don't have to torque it down. That's what most people are doing when they're breaking it. They're, they're using this pin and they're pulling really hard thinking they got to really squeeze. And you don't have to do that. It, it's just past the snug is all you need. Okay, so we're going to zero this out. We already have our X, Y zeroed out. So all we need to do is zero out a Z. And here's, here's the uh, method I use. So I already know my zero is all taken care of. Before I actually started this video, I surfaced this whole project. 
uh, just so I now I know that the entire project is flat and it's all at the same plane so I can literally zero out anywhere so we're just gonna come back right there blow it off and the other thing to do when you're bringing your Z down to your touch probe um, don't put your touch probe don't put your touch probe underneath it while you're bringing it down that's because we'll overrun and uh, break our bit running right into the probe uh, so I'm about a uh, three-eighths of an inch away so I'm gonna switch my speed so what I've done here wait a minute So I was set on rapid here, and I was bringing the Z down. Now I've gone to the normal, which basically just turns the feed rate down, just so I can jog it down just a tad. I'm going to go back to Z, take it down a little more. Okay, so a little less than an eighth of an inch, that's fine. Make sure your magnet's attached. <clears throat> now G sender. Uh, it has a nice little uh, feature where you you have to make sure that magnet's attached or it won't run. So we're set up on the probe right here. Probe, I've got it set for Z, so it's going to do Z only. We're going to click the probe button. All right, and it brings up this screen, and what that's basically saying is we got to touch the plate to the bit before it's going to allow us to actually start the cycle. So we're gonna bring this up and just touch it and watch the screen. You see we got this red dot and here it says no touch. This button was grayed out, now it's not. I'm gonna cancel that, I'm gonna do it again. Probe, so you can see the button is, <coughs> is grayed out. Got a red light there. I'm gonna touch the plate to the bit and so you see the button change, touch detected, green light. When I take the plate away, it turns red and says it's not touching right now, but we can start the probe. So now we're gonna start the probe. All right. Okay, so that's gonna be the roughing bit. Cross your fingers. Start. I set the Makita on three. Can the machine coordinates be reset like set in your home in the upper left corner? Okay. So that's a really, really good question. Um, there's two things you can do. Yes, you can reset your zero with your plate. So you've got the XYZ you can set with this plate. Um, and then you come back and do that again. The thing is, is you've got to be dead nuts. Because if, if you're doing like ultra fine detail and you have to reset it right in the middle of the job. Hey, Huntsville. Um, you're right in the middle of the job. It's almost guaranteed to be off. And that's why we use something called work offsets. That's a little more advanced. Um, but you need the sensors on the machine in order to be able to do that. Okay, so we're gonna run this cycle. <laughs> Watch how fast this roughing bit, you know, goes. So a little bit of a stall there for a second. Okay, I know why that happened. I'm using a drill cycle, and I had a dwell command in there. And when you're using a drill peck cycle, the, I need to take that dwell out. Uh, it'll come down the bottom of the hole and it'll dwell for a certain amount of time, which is what we set. Try to tape over the bit. Say that again? Or just type something else in so that peck comes back up.
Yeah. Yeah, it's got the auto zero touch point. I got it over here. That's the auto zero touch plate. Um, I actually haven't worked with it much yet, so I need to do a video on it. But this actually saves you a step if you're working with it. It'll, it'll, when you're setting your XYZ, you have to tell the machine what bit size that you're using. With this, you don't have to tell the bit size. So it's saving you a step, making sure uh, it's eliminating a step where an error can happen. So this thing's awesome. It's awesome. I've used it a couple times, but I have to get in the habit of using it more, and I'm going to shoot it. Here. So you're going to notice that it's leaving this little edge right here. And can do that all the way around. And the reason is, is because I changed the directions. Let's see where we are. I changed the, uh, the tool path. So I can move the tool path. What I did was I took the 90 degree V bit, and it was going to do the flower, and then it was going to be the finish on this whole thing for the V bit, but I didn't want to go back to the 90 degree V bit. So, when I created the, all the tool paths, I used, I'll show you, just in case you didn't know. Right here. You see these arrows right there. And whatever tool path you have. Okay. So whatever tool path you have highlighted blue, you click the arrow in the direction you want to move it. So I can move it up, I can move it down. All right, so the path, welcome finish, is actually way down here. Uh, welcome finish, clear one, clear two, and then welcome finish. <coughs> and I don't need it there. Okay, I want it up by the other mighty V bit to say the tool path, uh, the tool change. So I was able to just kind of think how all these are going to be laid out. So now, um, welcome clearance. So this is a clearance right now. We're going to come back in and do the whole thing again. This is just roughing stuff out. That's why you, uh, you're leaving or you're seeing this step all the way around. It's, it's, it's a technique I use. I think I created a video on it. Or, oh, I have not created a video and I've been wanting to. Okay, so if you ever want to do like really deep, deep carved flat bottom stuff, um, you want to use the offset command. I gotta create a video on it. It's on a list. And I've been wanting to create that video for quite a while. So I can amp this up. This is rocking out. I'm going at 80 inches per minute. I'm going to bring up your one. All right, so I just brought it up to 160%. So that's from 80 inches per minute. So it's probably about 130 inches per minute. Ah, much better. Uh, this is an 80% step over. So we're gonna, oh, I'm going to update the database again. Well, this is for shallow. So this, I ran this plug before. Gotta find it. Thank you. 
so this router bit, this is the rocking end there. It cut this out of this piece of oak, just like that. Did it two minutes with this router bit. So uh, I got a TikTok video that I made for that. I'll put this video out in uh, a couple of weeks, I think. I'm almost out of stock, and when I put videos out about new bits, uh, they pretty much sell pretty fast. All right, so that's done. So just hog all that out. It's all clearance cut. And so the next one is going to be, uh, we're going to go to the, uh, <laughs> all right, so we're going to use the half inch ball nose and we're going to do the outer, uh, this part of the project now. This, can, this is going to be really quick. So we're going to load that. Uh, boundary accent is what I titled that as. It's going to make two passes. When you create a tool path with a ball nose, there's things you need to take into account. Or well, one of the things you want to take into account. So first of all, we're using the big stiffy half inch ball nose. It's one of the more popular ball nose that I seems to move through the IDC store. It's, it's a good size for cutting your juice grooves. And I also want to show you how to do a tapered juice groove, meaning it actually goes downhill into the, the bowl of the, the juice groove, juice catcher. Okay, so <clears throat> when you are running with a ball nose, this one is a half inch, which means uh, it's got a quarter inch radius. And your first depth of cut, you want it to be about 70% down the radius. And then you can make your next cut all the way down the radius and past the radius. And the reason be is because that'll make a really clean cut on the radius that you're going to be creating. If you try to go all the way down the full radius, then you're going to rip the edges. Uh, you're going to have tear out on your cut. All right, so let's set this guy up. And... Come on down, camera. You didn't have a ball nose, so use my polish. <laughs> Do you ever wish you had an ATC? Yeah. Totally. ATCs. So you're not going to find them on this level of machine, though, unfortunately. But yeah, ATCs are very convenient. Uh, so an ATC is an automatic tool changer. For those of you who don't know, so you have a what's called a magazine. And just like a bullet magazine, except, except it's uh, loaded with router bits. And the machine will come in and swap out the bits. You find that on more expensive machines. Now, I'm getting a Phantom CNC here this month, the four foot by four foot industrial grade machine, which I'll be shooting videos on, of course. Uh, but I'm, I'm not getting an ATC with it, uh, but I may upgrade to an ATC. <clears throat> It really depends on the type of work that I get with it. So that one, I will probably employ that machine, go out and actually find some work for it, uh, and then I'll hire somebody once I get a routine down with whatever projects I get for it. Okay. When you probe a, a new a next time, you always want to get that sawdust off of the bottom because that will throw off. I mean, even though it's wood, it's, it's sometimes not that accurate that we're trying to that we have to do, but it's still good just to blow off that dust to make sure it's not there. And we'll go back and probe again. We're set on probe. We're set on Z. We're going to hit the probe button. 
And now I got to touch the bit to the plate. It's ready to go. One of the things I like to do when I'm probing is I will hold the hold the plate down because if you, you can if you look at it, I mean, I can get a little bit of movement here and make sure that your probe is not sitting around like a cut area because there may be like a a chip that's hanging up just enough to throw that plate off and that could throw off your whole uh, your whole zero reference point. Okay, so you cycle that in. Uh, I'm gonna do that again. If you're not sure, you can always probe your zeros again. All right, happy with that. This is going to go quite quick. I think I've got this set at 80 inches per minute. Do you ever wish you had? Okay. Um, <laughs> if I had an ATC for all the bits that I have inventory, that would be one big ass magazine, I tell you what. Um, okay, so let's rock her out. <laughs> For some reason, I'm really nervous about this cut. Okay, so why didn't this start this cut over by its home position? It's because when you draw your vectors, there's always a start node. And the start node is over here. Yeah, it's when you get this kind of stuff that it already starts to look really awesome. This is one of the design actually starts to come out. Okay, so you see we got a nice clean line here. And that's because it's not going the full radius of the hook. There's notice too, it's ramped here. So, so I am getting a little bit of curl. Some of it's just fine. This kind of material is the, uh, the shelving material. Can't get it loaded. And uh, it's about the cheapest of the cheapest pine you can possibly find. The grains are really, really leafy. And pine, by its very nature, is really hard to wear. So if you're new and you're trying to do a project and you're looking at pine and wondering why it's so fuzzy, it's typically not the loudest bit. It's more so the material itself. Fine is just what you call fuzzy or hairy wood. Okay, one of the things about this run is when it came in, I set the, the plunge rate at 80 inches per minute and the cut rate at 80 inches per minute. But I ramped it in. And so ramping it you know the bit enters the material like that and so it's it's no different when you're plunging that straight down that's when you want to come in at a slower rate when you're ramping you can ramp in at full speed so you have to change your plunge rate when you go on when you're ramping change your plunge rate to your feed rate let me show you what i'm talking about we're going to get back into the design And I'm just going to open up on these tool paths. And we're going to go to the, that's not the right tool path to open up. Ah, thanks for the coffee. I need it. <laughs> I need it. It's late, late for me, and I'm still going to be at this for a while. So right now it's 12.30. So, so uh, he just bought me a cup of coffee. Um, I have a, a, a contribution link. It's uh, buy me a coffee 
and it's usually in the the um, the doggone it, the description areas of my videos. Okay, what was I doing? I was going to talk to you about the ramping. Okay, so boundary accent. So right here is a ramp. And you add ramps to the tool path. And so this, I've got it selected on smooth. And the ramp is one inch. So it's going to ramp in the material um, to about a 0.12, no, 0.22, I don't remember what it was. Um, it's going to ramp into the material at an angle. And it's, it's a smooth ramp, and that's there's my distance, one inch. And so that's, uh, hopefully I explain that well enough. I don't know you're doing live stream tonight. Must have missed it. Well, I didn't announce anything. <clears throat> I just, I'm making the sign. I know I'm going to be up late, so I figured... Um, that, uh, <laughs> thanks, Bill. Um, I figured, what the hell? I'll just start talking while I'm making the thing. All right, so what's next? Uh, I think we have to do... Okay, so we are going to do the outer profile cutout. Now, you'll find this interesting. I'm going to actually cut the project out before the inside stuff is done. And I'm doing this because... Um, so... I want to not go to a quarter inch bit, which is going to do a lot of the clearing work in here, the clean work. We used the roughing bit before, and now we're using the clean, uh, the, I'm going to use the quarter inch down cutting bit, and, and it's going to clean all this up, and then it's going to switch over to the eighth inch down cutting bit to get into all the little fine details. And typically, we're going to cut the project out at the end but I don't want to do the tool change two times. So I'm going to actually cut it out right now. I've got it held down with the, you know, the CA glue technique. So I'm using the painter's tape, and I use the thi uh, thick medium. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Oh, I got it right over here. Hang on. So I'm using this stuff here. Um, so the, where it's actually at, it's still going to be holding the sign with the tape. It's going to be holding it there. It's going to be holding it all the way across the middle, and it'll be holding it at the top up there. So I'm not worried about doing a cutout. And the reason I'm doing that first is if there is any shift in on the project, that when it's doing the finish work here, uh, that shift will already be taken into account, and then I won't have some weird witness marks going on up in here. All right, so we are now going to the quarter inch down cutter. I'm sorry, I'm going to use the compression end mill. So this is a compression here. And I'll explain the compression real quick. The compression has a down cut area on it. Uh, focus camera. Get some light up here. All right, so it's got, when the router bit is turning like that, it's got a down shear action, which keeps the top side clean, uh, prevents tear out. And at the very bottom, a little messy, but you can see there's a back cut right there, or an up cut area. And that's there. Now, I have, I've, I'm going to get in the habit of making lives. I'm going to be doing um, <coughs> more live training. I'm going to be doing also, thanks, Andrew. I'm going to be doing uh, some uh, other stuff, too, courses, more teaching, more business. Uh, I'll be doing it more in a, a, a service called Meeting. It's kind of like Zoom, but it's a different service. Okay, so anyway, we'll get back to that later. Um, yeah, so it's got the up cut there. Uh, so on the bottom of the project, the bit is turning like this, so you're getting this down shear action at the top, which keeps a nice, clean, sharp corner right here. With the up shear, it's having the reverse effect on the bottom, so you get a nice, clean cut on the bottom. Uh, it saves some sanding. It saves some tear out. 
And I believe we're going to cut this out in one pass. And then we'll go into the finish. All right, so I'm going to set the zero up. You haven't gotten the compression bit yet. Um, I think right now my inventory is three bits. But uh, I can usually get them pretty quick. So, I'm going to say this again for anybody else who popped in. The, about the red button on the Makita router, if you have a Makita router. Makita, well first of all, anytime you change your, your bits, clean your collets. Wood acts like a lubricant when it gets up in there. Also clean your router bits. If, if, like when you get router bits from me, if it has an oil film on it, you always want to make sure you get that cleaned up. Okay. So what I was going to say is about this red button. Don't use it to tighten your bit. Rules about tightening your collets. Number one, always clean the collet out. Number two, use the red button just to snug the bit in place so you can get it tight. Uh, because what you're doing, uh, Makita says you can use a red button, but a lot of people over torque and that causes stress on the uh, on the body and that causes the body to split. So by never using the red button as your torque point, you won't ever run into that point, that problem. And the third is don't you don't have to super tighten it. You gotta get it snug and just a hair pass snug and you'll be just fine. So I could sit here and squeeze it even more if I wanted to. But what I'm doing is, if you see, I'm pushing with my thumb and pulling with my fingers and doing it pretty hard. And that is tight enough. All right, let's get that raised up. And I appreciate all the late nighters hanging out with me. Okay, so now I'm starting to lose my zero. That's uh, so why I keep it nice and flat. Okay, I usually start out at 75 millimeters per second, bump the speed as needed. Yeah, that's that's a good way of doing it. Um, so now I'm going to change my zero location. I'm not changing my zero location, I'm changing the location where I'm going to take my zero from. Since I surfaced the whole board in the beginning, so all this is all at the same height, so I can re-zero my Z anywhere. And because I cut here, I got maybe a little bit of a lip right there. So I don't even want to put the touch play touch probe here. We're gonna keep it in the back over there. Up a little bit. So I'm getting rid of all sawdust underneath that plate so it doesn't confuse anything. All right, we're setting our probe. We're set up on probe. We got the Z set. We're going to hit the probe. And now we have to touch the plate. Next file, which is going to be going to be the outer profile. So we're doing the cutout, and then we're going to do the inner clean out or the start doing the finish work on the inside. All right. So I can't remember my speeds that I've set this up. How much more rigid would you say the Mark II gantries. Uh, it is a lot more rigid. It actually, the way they've designed it, 
with this one. It's it's really fascinating uh, that they've been they've designed it better than the Mark One. Uh, just so I'll, I'll explain it to you briefly. So this is the retrofit Mark One with the extension kit. So I can't really explain it, but you know it's got the triangle, um, the triangle form there, and it's got another triangle. Uh, I'm sorry, 90 degree plate that are two 90 degree plates together. And, oh, cool. Hope you used my link, Tom. Um, so it had what they call these planes that you can, there's like theoretical planes that go through surfaces, like um, you got steel here, right? So there's a theoretical plane that goes through there. There's another theoretical plane that goes down this way. Uh, another theoretical plane. So this extrusion has been all redesigned. It's got so many different planes in it. Every time that you add a plane, like this theoretical plane, it's like adding another wall. And every point that those planes intersect, not just inside the material, but in the, theor in the space, adds rigidity. So you, like you got a plane that goes across here, right? It's flat surface, so there's a theoretical plane that comes out here. And then back here, there's a theoretical plane that comes up here. And where these two planes intersect is out in space. And so there's a, a, they, they lock in there. And so that adds to the structure. Then you got a, another plane here that locks, you know, it intersects this plane, intersects that plane. And so they're all throughout this. And so it's so much stronger. Now I'm going to estimate just based on my design experience of structure and the machine work that I did that that is... Um, that that this is six times uh, better. So do I run the MK2 faster? Yeah. Yeah, I've actually turned the rapids up on it. Uh, it comes in, I can't remember what it comes in, but I turn the rapid up on it. Um, Mark 1 has some flex on it, the axis. It's still a rigid machine. This this one is a lot, lot more rigid, a lot more rigid. I still have to do a review video on it, but I had to get some run time in it too. All right, so we got to run this, this part out. So we're going to actually cut out the sign, the welcome sign. This is where we're at so far. <laughs> still looks very choppy. We're going to cut it out, and then we're going to come in and do our cleanup cut with the quarter inch, and we're going to come in with the eighth inch bit, and then this will be done. And then uh, the whole sign will be done. All right. I think that's. I think this is the last tool path. Uh, I gotta take a look real quick. Okay. Out of profile. Yeah. Okay. So two more. Two more. We're gonna do the quarter inch with the compression bit and then we're going to do the eighth inch and this this sign will be done so I've got it loaded up so this is where the the uh, compression bit um, you get to see it cut all the way through the project I don't uh, go live that often, but there's something I have to I'm not going to have some flex on that. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Remember, I said the start point was over here on that line. That's why it's coming over here. So it's ramping in. Set the, uh, the depth proper in this particular part of the program. So I have to change the deadline.
Place an order next for the 3030. Excellent. Make sure you use my link. It helps gives me a, 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 a burden. Okay, I gotta go back into that tool pile. I'm gonna stop this. It's going to be the next one. So. Stop that. Take it up. I have to fix this program. Okay, so what I did not do in the outer profile cut. Um, well, it looks like it should be good. Why did it not cut all the way down? So, right there, it says it's going to depth of 0.75. And so this one should have gone all the way down. All right, so I'm going to give it, make it do two passes. Uh, 0.375, okay. Don't really need to, but even I get nervous about some of this stuff sometimes. All right, so we're going to just calculate that tool path. I'm going to create that tool path. Save. Save the tool path. I'm going to give it a name. We're going to call it temporary cutout. Just I, when when I create a file that I'm not sure about, I'll, uh, or I know it's just like a fix, then I call it temporary cutout. So in the vector software, you can see right here, you got the blue lines. So now we know that this is actually making two passes. So let's see what this does. Uh, go back to G Sender. We're going to load that specific one up. <clears throat> Temporary toolpath. You went 0.753. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> It's almost like it didn't take the zero. So these are some of the fun things you run into when you're doing this kind of work. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. So I'm just going to come back and do it over here. I just want to make sure I get a good flat surface. I'm looking at the bit, and uh, the bit was starting up in the air like that far. So I'm figuring my zero didn't take when, when I did it. I had my, I was wearing these things so I couldn't hear the machine. All right, this time it should go.
that is that it's turning like that, so it's making a conventional cut. And a conventional cut is when it's actually cutting against the movement. So it's moving that way, and it's trying to cut like that. The climb cut, on the other hand, is if it was going I could build a moat around this thing. Caliper the wood. Yeah, I actually, uh, my calipers are up in my um, my apartment. And that's why I didn't do it. Because um, I didn't have them. So I actually honestly knew I was going to run into that. But uh, you know what? That's what shortcutting will get you. Uh, I don't need to take that out. Whew. Glad I didn't do that. Because now we got to go and uh, do the finishing here. So now i got to regenerate just that part of the program. Because I don't need to run through that cut again. So we're going to regenerate the welcome finish quarter inch. So it's going to do that. Okay. Now, you remember how this thing was bouncing around before? If you've run your Vectric software, and you're wondering why the router bit, the, the machine will go here, it goes over there, it'll go there. Uh, but the V-bit saves a lot of time. V-bit lasts long. Yeah, good, good point. Um, that's actually a good point. I didn't never thought about that. Yeah, and the eighth inch bit is less expensive as well. So, um, Army Dogs creations. Uh, so what he'll do is he'll use the eighth inch bit first and just kind of clear out and then uh, go to his V bit. Uh, and what his, what his intention is is to use the less expensive bit to do his clear cut and then come in with his more expensive bit and, and save the bit. And we can afford to lose the eighth inch better than we can afford to lose a V bit because the price is so much different. All right, so you see all these red lines in there. I hope you can see them. That's all where this thing is going to be bouncing all over the place. It's very inefficient. Unfortunately, that's what it's going to be. Okay, so we're going to use this. We're going to, I'm just going to give this a name. It's going to put a temp in front of it. So what I'm doing, I just had to rewrite this particular tool path. It was combined with another tool path, but I had a little issue. So now I know the other tool path is working. When I know this is working, I'll recombine those tool paths into one tool path. And maybe I'll make this G code available if anybody wants it. Well, I'm not going to give this sign away. This one I don't give away because it's part of the router bit starter package. Okay, let's load this one up. But it is available on Etsy. Got it on Etsy. I'm going to move my stuff off, off Etsy and put it on the website after I rebuild the website. Okay, welcome to finish. There it is. So that, you'll start seeing changes in my website in about a month. I'm going to have it completely overhauled. I'm going to make it much easier to get to the router bit. So I'm going to start adding articles to it. Uh, I'm going to simplify it, make it more focused. Okay, let's rock and roll. <laughs> So while this is doing this, I gotta go relieve myself. Just make sure it's starting out 
Okay. By the way, it's nice to have. Well, Mr. P, I am really sorry. Because let's say you're using a down bit and it's making 40% of the step in The down bit, by nature of the spiral, Down bit 
is turning. It's turning like this. Mr. P has been struggling. He's uh, emailed me a couple of times. Actually, I think you and I are going to call him. The whole thing is to help everyone become an amazing creator, right? And so we got into this, and we've just been struggling. And when that happens, it becomes very frustrating. You know, down in the heart, we want to just start making stuff. And so he's having trouble with the machine, and uh, doesn't understand what's going on with it. And uh, so long those promise that will help him out as much as possible, but we got to get the thing on so I think I'll make an exception on that. I want to drop me an email and give me a phone number. But in the subject line, for are sure. Okay, let's talk about the down bit and why you get witness marks at different depths when you're doing this kind of stuff. Because the down bit is turning like this. And so it's, it's trying to corkscrew itself out of the material. You're getting an upward pressure. And then when it gets to the final cuts, where it's only making just little thin cuts on the side walls, there's no more upward pressure, so it can relax down. There's actually a physical uplift on the bit that you, that you get. This You find this in industrial machines. But uh, it's just the nature of corkscrew. It wants to turn it, pull itself in a certain direction because it's a corkscrew. So, the way to offset that is by doing all your rough cutting, do a, a pass that's not all the way down to depth, but just leaves a little bit of material left, like what you see right here. Okay, and then you come back in and you do your finished cut. And, it, and then you won't have any witness mark around the letter. That's, uh, I got a video about that. And it's called the Science of Bound Bits. And every brand new person should be watching that video to understand exactly how to compensate what you're doing right now. So you do two passes, you do a roughened pass to clear all the material out. You're not at full depth, but just shy of the full depth. And then come back in with a finished pass. It takes twice as long, but this is how you're going to get good finishes. It's standard in, in machining. To do that, you have what's called a roughing pass and you have a finishing pass. <clears throat> and it's no different when it comes to the CNC. Yeah. That's so cool. So all that stuff is good. Finishing up. So there's just, there's just not much work that's being put against the bit right now to make it do uh, upward or downward pressure. So did any of that make sense? Put a yes in the comment. So did I explain that well enough? Let's not troubleshoot it here. Okay, this is more of a serious device. This is a bit more of a technical thing, so I guess somebody uh well, he's been talking a long enough, so like they're the expert kind of thing. Uh, yeah, he's talking about it quite a bit.
So Mr. P, you send me your, uh, send me your phone number. Let's see if we can talk to you now. One of the things we'll notice, though, is the screen is clean up top. You can see it's fuzzy. Right? Even though it's a clean surface, that's the nature of the time. CNN, I promise you, I won't play the news. <laughs> Jack, uh, I think that's uh, much more relaxing to be watching the show. Uh, we have to create the vectors. 
So this welcome sign is actually starting to come, come together now. So now the last thing is the eighth inch bit. Now I'm going to do it with a down bit. <clears throat> so we just have to do, just get, it's going to bounce all over the place. So it's going to be uh, just all the touch-ups that need to be done. We're going to load that one up. It's the last program. La, 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 la. I believe it's that one finish clear I gotta see the file name because you know me I always put the bit name into the the file name so 18 DC so I know that that's the one I also numbered them this is number nine I'm gonna load that one up and so all this is gonna do is all these little spots all right let's change out that bit anybody who has popped on I'll just walk through this again so you understand what I'm doing. If I don't knock my camera to the floor. All right. So I'm going to bring this out so I can change the bit out. So we're going to do it in G Sender. Just uh, Y. So right there. And I'm probably going to raise it up a little bit. Hit the Z. One of the things, so one, someone emailed me, and they, they were, when we set our Z, yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, put that in the name of your file. So Andrew said about the numbering order. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did. If you look at my toolpath names, with the exception of the welcome finish, <clears throat> they all have numbers next to them. So I know that this one will be number two. The surfacing program was number one. Uh, then these two both will be at the third toolpath. That's number four. Um, I didn't name that one. I didn't number that one. Uh, I'm not sure why I forgot to do that. Okay. Okay. So we're using the eighth inch down cutter. And I'm using the little sleeve, okay? Again, sawdust, get all the sawdust out of your collets. You get a toothbrush, I always use my toothbrush. You know, when I'm done here, then I'll go ahead and brush my teeth with this thing. <laughs> with, the, with these collets, okay, I will come up to about that point. Okay, so you got a n quite a bit it's about that far up into the collet. So when it squeezes down, it's going to be good. Now, one of the things to remember when you're using a collet adapter, which that's what this is called, <clears throat> is now you have uh, the collet, the outer collet, squeezing the inner collet or the collet adapter, and then that's squeezing the bit. So you, this is where you want to put a little bit more force on your jam nut when you're tightening it down. But I'll say it again, don't use the red button to tighten down. So you hold the red, don't hold the red button down and take your wrench and try to crank it because you start to stress the body of the Makita router. And if you hang out on Facebook enough, you'll see once in a while somebody has split the housing of the router because they did that, they over torque. All right. Remember, every time, get that sawdust out of there. There's not much there, but you just want to be in the habit of doing it. You take your toothbrush and get it out of there. Both of them. 
And sometimes you can get up in there and feel up inside there to see if you got anything going on up there. A little bit, a little bit of dark stuff there. And I'm getting too much, too much stuff here. All right. So when I insert this, I'll show you where I insert it up to. Come on, focus in camera. Uh, it's not wanting to focus for some reason. Uh, well, you can see uh, there's about an eighth of an inch hanging out. That's okay. We got the majority of the collet up the side. What do you mean? What works better? There was one. Oh, shoot. I have to zoom in and out for the messages to pop back up. <laughs> okay. So now we got this collet adapter on there. I'm going to squeeze down. And I can actually feel that I need to bring it down a little bit more. So this time I'm going to torque over a little bit more. But if I could keep going, I could probably get another eighth of a turn to a quarter of a turn out of this. And you don't need to do that. You just need to get down to where you can feel it's grabbing. Don't over tighten. You don't need to. <clears throat> All right, get my position there. When you're bringing the thing down to probe, always have your plate out of the way so you don't accidentally drive your bit into your plate. Went too far. Okay. Make sure your sawdust is away from here off the bottom of your plate. Probe right there. The window will come up. It's waiting for us to touch. <clears throat> so we have to touch first. Just like that. I got a green light. You know, it's been kind of nice with you guys here. <laughs> uh, kind of uh, takes away the any loneliness that I might feel. All right, so. So this is a uh, vector for you, okay? It's, uh, it's 12.20 p.m. here. This is vector. This thing's going to like run the most inefficient path it possibly can. It's going to come over and touch this here, clean that little bit there, then it's going to go all the way over there, clean that little bit. Am I right? Dang. Then it's going to come all the way over here. Then it's going to come back down here. And then it'll come over here. Oh. I think I'm starting to see a pattern here. Man, Bill, shoot me a cactus, dude. So, Bill, I uh, you think you're in Tennessee for a while. And uh, came, Bill came up to visit me and actually stayed visit me and stayed at my place for a bit. 
Then he headed up to Arizona. There you go. Thanks, Bill. So he's living out in Arizona now. So, cactus. with the cactus, so when I left work several years ago, I said I was never going back. Uh, I had this thing, idea popped in my mind. Got this whole thing, cartoon cactus in my mind. And the idea was, oh, let's just go to Arizona see a cactus. And so that's what I did. Took six months to travel around the States. Slept in my Jeep. Yeah, Andrew, you're right. Um, but it is very inefficient when it comes to this. Anyway, uh, yeah, six months driving around, sleeping in my Jeep up, up in the mountains out west, hiking. Now we got the old town. Got to see the cactus. I'll tell you, there's a big ass cactus there. You know, this could, this is something that could be worked out as far as the efficiency of the things that it comes here. Um, and maybe Vector hasn't had enough complaints about it. If I was doing this, making like this sign in mass, I'd be on the phone with Dr. Kanaski. I get a lot of emails, so people ask me about vector questions. So I'll redirect them to vector. So I don't work for vector. I don't make it a lot of food. So I'll uh, be talking to them a few times. People are talking to software because they're. You know what? You're absolutely right. I'm going to do it. Why didn't I think of that? So I just think so. Uh, well, I'll just ramp up the speed because they're not cutting much. So I just brought up to 170%. So I think I ramped up to 100 inches per minute. Oh my god, this kid. It's still awesome to watch. You know, part of it is... I don't know, bro. Um, it's, it's satisfying. You can't uh, in fact, when the thing is cutting. But when it's dancing all over the place and not cutting, it's not so satisfying. That's when you get irritated. However, the project is coming out looking really good. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been zoomed out. I zoomed in. I 
I'll send Vector to me. I, I really want to know about this. No. Oh, maybe the audience was. Has anybody used uh, like diesel or car code? Yes, and that would be the last of it. All right, so carbide carbur create does it too. Okay. okay, so the sign is done now. And let's take a look. Okay, so you notice there's a little, some furries that are going on here. Come on, camera, focus in. There we go. Getting some furries going on here, here. This is part of what um, the nature of pine as well. But one little thing that I really, really, really like. So, got to go get it. Are these little sanding wheels. I get them from Amazon. They're super cheap. Plastic bristle brush. I'll have to try that with brushes. Um, I think I just saw these and tried them out. So I'll just show you real quick. So it's, uh, it's just that little bit. Just clean that out there. Uh, just got them. <laughs> okay, cool. So I will clean that up tomorrow, but let's take this off so you guys can see it. So we're going to see the amazing project we just created together. So the CA glue is pretty stinking amazing. I don't like it. All right, that's what we just made. Come on, Garrett. Create some shadow on that. Uh, texture would be it. Yeah, could do that. You know, the only thing I don't like is I got that knot. Right there, it kind of takes away the color, but you can stain it or stuff. This is actually the third one I made because I keep screwing up the staining on these things. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Time's up. Yeah, it is. Um, 
Oh. Time to go to bed. <laughs> but I do thank you for hanging out with me and um, spending time. This is actually really enjoyable for me because most of the time I'm spending my time all by my little old lonesome doing this stuff. So doing this live is kind of cool. I'll put links in the, in, the, in the description later on for all the stuff that I've used on this. And uh, the, the project is a, a vector you can have. It's on Etsy. Um, I might have tool paths in it, but they're old tool paths. Don't trust those tool paths. Work it out yourself. You got all the designs here. I can't actually see the screen right now because I'm looking at the other side of my phone. So uh, I can't reverse it. My phone doesn't have that for some reason. Oh. So I can't reverse it while I'm actually taking. Um, so, CNC brothers and sisters, I hope you got something out of this and uh, watching the campfire. And it's time to chill out. So, toodaloo. Until next video, I will talk to you next time. Now I gotta figure out how to end the live. Uh, la 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 la. I think like that. Yep. There we go.